So that means that it's a regular, it's a little bit squished because of the two, but the plus one tells us the origin or the middle part is left, left one place to the left from the origin. There it is. Now, that dashed line is called a vertic vertical asymptote. Write that down because you're going to have to know that. We're going to get into that. Vertical asymptote. An asymptote is a, is a vertical or horizontal axis that the function converges onto or never what? Never touches. Never touches. The vertical asymptote usually has a lot to do with the domain. You said this was 5.1 or 2? 5.1. Negative 1. Negative 1 is your domain. In other words, you cannot use negative 1 in this function. Why? What happens when you use negative 1 in this function? Reverses it. Nope. Negative one, the horizontal shift. Why is it negative one? Because you cannot have what in the denominator? Zero. Zero. You cannot have zero in the denominator. So what number gives you zero in the denominator? Negative one. Negative, negative one. one. So the domain of this function is going to be from negative infinity to negative one, not inclusive of negative one, and then from negative one, not inclusive, to positive infinity. You can use all numbers, but you cannot use negative one. So negative one is represented by the vertical asymptote. Is that always going to happen? Yes. Whatever number cannot be used, that will be a vertical asymptote because that graph does not exist at negative one. It can because if you plug negative one into the formula or into the equation, you're going to get an E-R-R-O-R. -R -R. Pronounce it however you would like. Okay? Er. No, you're, you're a dumb racist southerner. You said any number that can't be used. What? Did you repeat what you said? Any number, any number can be used except for X is equal to negative 1. You cannot use negative 1. What does negative 1 do to the equation? It blows it up. That's the actual term that they used in mathematics. When a, when a number does not work in an equation, it blows the equation up. So you cannot, it's kind of like putting, what happens when you put water in your gas tank? Your That's a fine break. question. What? <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's a right. fine question. Some people might not know it. <laughs> do have some DAs that don't know what, what goes in the gas tank. But anyway, cool. if you yeah. put Kool-Aid in your gas tank, it will not crank, okay? I'm sorry. The engine will not start, okay? So if you put negative 1 into this function, what will happen? It will not work. That's about the best way I can explain it. And the only way to show that graphically is with a vertical dashed line. Well, what, why you uh, why you got one at horizontal? We're gonna get into that a little bit later. Okay, another few slides. We'll talk about the horizontal asymptote. Comprende? Mm -hmm. Comprende. All right, and that's where they're staying right there. Now, the union basically is that U. The union is whenever two things are put together. Think of it like the war between the states, the north and the south. Afterwards, we became a more perfect what? Union. Okay? Mm -hmm. Union. A think of a marriage between whatever and whatever. A union. Two whatevers come together. I'm not going to say people because that might offend somebody. Okay? Two people <laughs> come together. Two whatevers come together. That becomes a union. All right? Just think of it. A union. That's. Does it overlap? No. Overlap is an intersection. Write that down. Overlap is an intersection, and that's an upside-down U. And we don't have to worry about that right now. Okay? So when you see that U, that basically means union. Negative infinity to negative 1 
union with negative 1 to infinity. But you can't use negative 1. That's why negative 1 has parentheses on it. Same thing with 0. I meant range. The vertical asymptote and the horizontal asymptote will always be the inclusive, the exclusive part of your domain and range. The part with the parentheses. Okay? And this is all test questions. Everything I'm covering right now is test questions. If I skip anything, you really don't have to worry about it. And there is the example. Now, if you wanted to draw the vertical asymptote, you would have to do, you can't do, you can do y is equal to x, you can do that. Or y is equal to zero, you can do that, but that's what you're going to see. All right, there's, there's, a, there's a question right there. X over X plus 1, you've got a horizontal shift of 1 to the left, and they just want you to do the domain and range. Well, you graph it with the calculator. All these are pretty much calculator drills, okay, except for vertical and horizontal shifts. So you make sure you have a calculator. Or come in and tell the teacher you don't have one after you've taken the test. Hey, do you have a calculator no, tomorrow? I do not. Uh -huh. And divide x into x plus 2, and you get 1, of course. Okay? There. Now, look what happens. We know that negative 1 is the vertical asymptote. How do we know that? Because what will not work in this function? Negative 1, Hubert, because it'll give you 0 in the denominator. That's right, class. So negative 1 is our vertical asymptote. You set the denominator equal to 0. That's how you find the vertical asymptote. You set the denominator equal to 0. Set the denominator equal to 0. I think I said that three times, right? Mm -hmm. Can you say it again? No. Now, how do you find the horizontal asymptote? Well, you're going to find the horizontal asymptote by a series of tests, and I'm not going to get into that right now because they're going to give you a big blue box, and it's going to show you how to do it, and I'm just going to wait till we get to that box, or it should. So we're going to kind of ignore the horizontal asymptote. We're going to talk about it, but we're going to get to that test, and then we're going to talk about how to figure it. Okay? They're divided. Okay? There's a rule to this. I'll go ahead and tell you the rule. If the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, the horizontal asymptote is 1. And you're going to see it later. You can write that down. If degree equals degree, if degree sub n is equal to degree sub d, degree of the denominator is equal to the degree of the numer not numerator, whatever, then the horizontal asymptote is equal to 1. And we'll get to that in just a minute. There it is. So what's the vertical asymptote? Negative 1. What's the horizontal asymptote? 1. So it's got a vertical shift of 1 and a horizontal shift of negative 1. And look up top. You see after we divided it, we got 1 plus 1 over x plus 1. The 1 is attached to the x, so that's a vertical, a horizontal shift of 1 to the left. And then you got 1 not attached to the x, but attached to the whole function, and that's a vertical shift of 1 up. Read from left to right. We have a function, negative infinity to negative 1, parenthesis. Then we have a function from parenthesis, negative 1 to positive infinity. Range, negative infinity to positive 1. From positive 1 to positive infinity is our second part of the range. So our vertical asymptote is negative 1. Our horizontal asymptote is 1. Here is the other function you need to know about, the volcano. And that should be the last one on your family of graphs that I gave you. It is. It's a miracle. Okay? So that is 
And we're going to add a couple. We're going to add the logarithms to your family of graphs, but not right now. Okay. You said set both of numerator and denominator. And I said what? The degree of the denominator is equal to the degree of the numerator. Then the horizontal asymptote, the HA, is 1. Okay, here's your volcano. Pretty self-explanatory. That's what it looks like. <laughs> now, what if I have an x plus 1 quantity squared on the bottom? Then that's a vertical a horizontal shift of 1 to the left. What if I have 1 over x plus 1 quantity squared plus 4? I have the plus 4 on the right side, then that's going to be a vertical shift of 4. So the same rules apply that you've been applying the last three units. Same rules. So I'm going to, you just have to draw it. It's on your family graphs. That's all I want you to do right there. Okay? So there, there's your vertical shift, or a horizontal shift of one to the what? Right. right. So now you're, instead of your vertical asymptote being the y-axis, now it's moved one to the right. How do you know that? Set the denominator equal to zero. X minus one, quantity squared is equal to zero. The square root of both sides, X minus one is equal to zero. Add one, X is cannot equal positive one. Because if it equals positive one, what do you get in the denominator? You get water in the gas tank. If you plug a one into that denominator, you're gonna get zero and zero will not work. So, as we learned in the first unit, if the, one, if the negative 1 is attached to the x, then it's a horizontal shift and it's always opposite. Now, the good thing about the volcano is the range is always going to be above, unless it's got a vertical mm -hmm. shift, it's always going to be above the x-axis. So, it's always going to be from 0 to infinity. My son was playing around, look, being nosy, and he found my dad gum. My dad gum. What do you call these watches? My, well, I don't use an iPhone, so this is a uh, Gear 2S, Gear 2, whatever. Anyway, I'm gonna get the newest one. I think it's a Gear 2S. But anyway, he found it, and the reason he found it was because I thought I lost it. Well, come to find out, guess where I lost it? in his bedroom okay it was stolen basically and and he found it and said daddy do you want this i said uh i only wore it one time and it was lost where'd you find it oh it was in my bedroom so i've worn it one time this is the second time i've worn it and i've had it for over a year so i don't know i guess i didn't miss it very much i don't even know why i wear it i don't Really, I don't understand these watches. I think they're monitoring your text messages. Yeah, and I don't, I don't like it. I don't. And I like it for the pedometer and the exercise and the heart rate. I like that. But I don't understand why you want to look at your messages on here when you can just take your phone. I don't understand. Uh, you know, that. Job just get a good people are lazy. Uh, the job. I understand the job. I understand that. What? Why don't you just get a Fitbit? I think I'm going yeah. to. I, I have one. I have one older ones. I want to get a new one. Yeah, I like the Fitbits. Yeah, the new ones are really expensive. You don't have a calculator, so be quiet. I know. <laughs> yeah. All right, there's, there's, there it is right there. Okay, all these are calculator questions. So I'm not, I'm not asking you to graph these. I just want you to be able to graph them on a the calculator. Tell me what the vertical asymptote is, tell me what the horizontal asymptote is, and tell me what the domain and range is, just like we did in unit one and two. Yep. All right, here. You can actually do this without even graphing. What's your horizontal shift? Negative two. Good job. What's your vertical shift? One. Negative, Negative one. one. So you know, and I take my handy dandy, you could actually graph this one without even using a calculator for you poor, dumb Southern racist, okay? <laughs> Got any in here? 
Yeah, you said error, right? Yeah. Okay, where is my whiteboard? How do you say C-L-E-M-S-O-N? Clemson. No, you said Clemson. If you're Clemson. a dumb racist southerner, you put the P in it. Clemson. Yeah, there you go. And if you're a sophisticated person that's not from the South, you say Clemson. <laughs> I ain't never heard them ESPN people. Yeah, they will no. not say Clemson. They will not. Clemson. Clemson. They say Clemson. Here we are in Clemson, South Carolina. Clemson's quarterback is doing real good. Clemson's running back. Clemson's secondary. I'm like, I can't even watch it. Shut up. Clemson. <laughs> what is it with them people? I don't understand. It's they ride the boat to the Holy Park. They'd rather sound like an idiot than sound like a dumb racist southerner, I guess. They want to be associated with our kind. Yeah, they don't want to be associated with our kind. Yeah. All right, I'm trying to get there, people. Just hold on. I'm thinking of three things at one time. All right, here we go. Take our handy dandy virtual pen. And. We just draw a sketch. And this is what I want you to be able to do right here. I want you to be able to do this without a calculator. This is the only part that I want you to do without a calculator. I want you to go, okay, negative two, that means two to the left, one, two, that means one down. So instead of drawing my graph like this, that's my parent graph. My new origin is going to be where? It's going to be at this new point. So I'm going to draw my, here's my, here's my new origin right here. So I'm going to draw my new axes right here. And my graph, this dashed line, is now going to be right here. So now I have a vertical asymptote of whatever your horizontal shift is. Oh, God, that was a message. wonder what that was. I need to check my phone. Oh my gosh. There's another one. Sure. Hold on a minute, y'all. I'm checking to see what time it is. All right. So my vertical asymptote, VA, is equal to negative 2. My horizontal asymptote is equal to what? Negative 1. So therefore, my new vertex of this function is negative 2, what? Negative 1. So just to, asymptotes always going to be whatever is out the side of the fraction. The horizontal asymptote is always going to be your, verti your yeah, that vertical is. shift. Yes. Always. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Now, not always, because sometimes it's not there and you have to divide, and we'll get to that later. This is just when it's in y is equal to intercept form. See, it's nice and this is nice and pretty. Okay. Sometimes it's not going to be like that. And we'll talk about that. All right, so our domain is going to be equal to negative infinity, so it's always this number, negative 2, and then negative 2 to what? Positive infinity, and you always put a u there just to make everything pretty. All right, range is equal to, or our horizontal asymptote is what? So it's going to be from negative 1 to what? Infinity. And that's what you should be able to do so far. And again, 90% of this comes from unit 1 and unit 2. The vertical and horizontal shifts that y'all learned, that's where it comes from. So shouldn't be anything new. The only thing new should be the actual half a volcano and the volcano. That's the only thing that should be new. So if you sucked at it before, you're going to suck at it here. Oh, great. Yep. <laughs> just wanted to remind you of that. Oops. Why should you just give up? That's what you should do. <clears throat> okay. A graph, blah, 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 answer is identify any vertical asymptotes. This is, the, okay, look at this function. This is a volcano, but it's got what? It's got a quadratic on top and bottom. So what's the degree of the numerator? Two. Two. What's the degree of the denominator? Two. Two. They're equal. So that means the horizontal asymptote is going to be 
In this case, well, it should be one, but it's not. No, it's two over one because it's always your co coefficient. We'll get to that, all right? But they want you to look at the graph. Just look at the graph. What is your vertical asymptotes? Negative two and what? Two. Positive two. two. What's your horizontal asymptote? Two. two. That's all they want you to do. A, identify any vertical asymptotes. Be negative two, positive two. Horizontal asymptote is x is equal to two. That would be a good test question. I wouldn't mind giving you this test question on the, just look at the graph and tell me what they are. The domain is going to be from negative infinity to negative two, from negative two to positive two, and then from positive two to what? Infinity, and those are all we use in them and with parentheses. Okay, they're not going to, the only x-intercept I see is zero, zero. And that's just touching. Yeah. Okay. Did you say yeah? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I thought you said yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Okay. D of, okay. The absolute value of f of x as x approaches 2. Why are they even doing this? This is out of, this is out of context. Okay, what's happening as x approaches positive 2? As x approaches positive 2, you get the vertical asymptote. The positive f of x would be up here in the first quadrant. Okay? That's nice. Is that where I was? Yeah. As x approaches the vertical asymptote, I will not ask this because this is out of this is out of context. I don't know why they're asking this. Either increase or decreases because the absolute value is always positive. It's up here. It's right in here. I can't. They're talking about this right there because what's in the first quadrant? positive numbers and that's where it says f of x is positive okay this is not a good part of the question i don't know where this this come out of left field that don't need to be we don't need to be worried about that right now you worry about that in first variable calculus you don't worry about that here as f of x as x approaches infinity positive infinity you're in the first quadrant you're still in the first quadrant because the second quadrant is between negative two and what positive two. They're asking as x approaches infinity, you're going to be in the first quadrant. And I don't know what they're asking, but y is equal to two. Yeah, but you're in the first quadrant. This, this, these two. D and E, I, I'm not going to worry about D and E because they're, they're not even pertinent to what we're learning in this section. Okay? All right. That's all I want you to learn out of, out of what did I say? 5. 5.1. 5. 5.1. I want you to know how to graph and how to find the x-intercepts and the y, I mean the x, the vertical asymptotes and the horizontal asymptote of the 1 over x and 1 over x squared. The half a volcano and the volcano. All right, let me go to 5.2 because that's probably where you're going to see the test that I told you to look for. Yeah. And I need to show you that test because it's important. At least I cover the important things and tell you what's not important. I could just I tell you I could just say you're responsible for everything is what I could say. I think I think I might do the head. Yeah, go ahead. You said you're only going to want us to know how to graph it to find the horizontal vertical. Find the horizontal, just what we did, the things we did today. Yes. Okay, I know it's nice. Yeah, it's nice. All right, here's an example. Find the domain and asymptotes of the follow of the graph. All right, what kind of graph is this? It's the x squared on the bottom, so it's going to be the shape the of the volcano, pretty much. But it has an x up top, so we've got a we got to find we got to set the denominator equal to what? Zero. Zero. Oh my gosh, that means the complete the square. You're never going to get away from completing the squares just like you're never going to get away from what? The shortcuts. So if you're wanting to get away from them, 
It's called liberal arts. All right, so 2x squared plus 5x minus 3 is equal to 0. 2x squared plus 5x plus blank is equal to 3 plus blank. 2x squared plus 5 halves x plus blank is equal to 3 plus 2 times blank. Half of 5 halves is going to be 5 halves times 1 half, which is 5 fourths, which is 25 over what? 16. So 2 times x plus 5 fourths quantity squared is equal to, that 2 will take that out to an 8, Oops. and this is going to be 24 eighths. 24 eighths plus 25 eighths is what? 49 eighths? Mm -hmm. Now we don't care about the vertex because that's not what we're looking for. So divide by 2, multiply to be 49 sixteenths. X plus 5 fourths, quantity squared, is equal to 49 sixteenths. Take the square root of both sides. Whoa. <laughs> there we go. Actually, I learned something new. Did y'all see this? Cool. Did I show y'all this last week? No, you did not. Now we'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, I finally learned how to do something and I try to do it and it won't do it. No. Okay. X plus 5 fourths is equal to positive or negative 7 over what? 4. X is equal to positive or negative 7 minus 5 over 4. And what's 7 minus 5? 2. And that's 1 half. So 1 X intercept is at one half, and the other x-intercept, or vertical asymptote, is uh, negative seven and negative five is, I have no idea, 12? Negative 12. three. So you got a vertical asymptote at one half and negative three. So whatever this graph looks like, one half, there's one, one half, you got a dashed line, and then at negative 3, you got a dash line. Now, the degree of this one is 1. The degree of this one is 2. So that means this one is less than this one. So that means that your, it's going to be negative 1 third is going to be your vertical. And we'll get into that later because... They're supposed to have already given you that, but for some reason they haven't given it to you. So we'll just wait until they give it to us, and then we'll go over it. So the horizontal is what, one third? Negative one third, it should be. Or one half. I can't remember. I have to look at the... Anyway, let's see what they, they talk about. I think I got it, didn't I? What, yeah. What's the answer? One half or... Negative three. So that's that. I get rusty on the horizontal asymptotes till I see the that's why I thought that they would have the test. But they didn't. Okay, y'all know how to do the domain. I'm not worried about the domain. The domain's gonna be from here to here, and then from here to here, and then from here to here. That's the domain. We talked about that. I'm trying to get to the test. But for some reason, they're not Given us, okay, they're doing X. Okay, there it is. There's one of the tests, but I'm still trying to. Hold on a minute. Thank you. Best place to put the most important part is where? At the end. At the end. All right, write this down. Other asymptotes. If the numerator has a lesser degree than the denominator. If the numerator has a lesser degree than the denominator, the horizontal asymptote is zero. I thought it was negative, I thought it was the, okay, but anyway. If the numerator and denominator have the same degree, then the horizontal asymptote is going to be the coefficients. There it is. There's what I was thinking of. 
All right, so I'll, I'll give you an example of both. Here's an example of the first one, A. F of X is equal to 2X over X squared plus 2. What's the degree of is the numerator? Yeah. What's the degree of the numerator? One. So let's take our highlighter and let's highlight that one. That one is less than the degree of the denominator. What's the degree of the denominator? Two. Two. Things I do for y'all, things I try to do for y'all, and uh, it's like fighting uphill battle. What I need is a what I need is a chalkboard. Is what I need, and posters. I need posters. <laughs> so if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. Your vertical, your horizontal asymptote is what? The x-axis, right that down. So I don't care what you have. If you can have something quinky like this, f of x is equal to x to the third minus x to the second minus 4x over 4x to the fourth minus 2x minus 3. What's the degree of the numerator? Three. What's the degree of the denominator? Four. Then this still applies. Doesn't matter what you have. If the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, then it's going to be the horizontal the horizontal asymptote is going to be the x-axis. Okay. What if you have the numerator being the same? Okay. Well, here's what they're talking about here. If they have f of x is equal to x plus 4 over 3x minus 2. Okay, so what's, what's in front of this x right here? A 1, right? So let's, let's, let's look at this because some of y'all will try to screw this up like banana with an amble. So I'm going to take this right here. There's my coefficient there. What's my coefficient here? One. And take my blue, take my yellow. What's your coefficient here? B. Your coefficient here is what? Three. And they took that B and put it right here. And they took that other one, that A, and they put it where? Right there. So if you if these are the same, if the degrees are the same, one and one, they're the same, then you just take the coefficient of the leading term. The coefficient of the x is one, coefficient of the bottom x is three. So therefore, what's the horizontal asymptote? One over one. Third. Now be sure you understand that because a while ago I thought it was the last, I thought it was this one right here. So it's been a while since I've done this, so I thought it was that. It's not the it's not the last coefficient. It's the leading coefficient right here. Okay. That's why it's important for this to be at the beginning of the slides instead of the end. And then there's one more. What if the degree of the numerator is higher than the degree of the denominator? Then you use dang old long division. There it is. Write that down. If the numerator is of degree exactly one greater than the denominator, there may be a defined divide. Exactly one degree. Yeah. They're not going to give you any of this. Not that way. Then you would use long division and graph and all that. I'll just give you an example because I know that's a lot of reading.
if f of x is equal to x plus 1 over, I'm sorry, x squared plus 1 over x minus 2. What's the degree of the numerator? 2. What's the degree of the denominator? 1. So you use long division. Now we're going to get into that as we do this section because this is when you're doing, you're actually doing something new here, okay? The, the previous sections are built upon one, two, and three, vertical shifts, horizontal shifts. Now we're actually using something different. We're finding the horizontal asymptote, which you're, you're not used to finding, so that's why we're doing this test, making sure they, okay. Okay, we'll get to that in just so let's go back now to the equation that we were working on now that they finally showed us something. Okay, were we doing this one? No, I don't think so. Is this the one we were doing? Let me go back and see. No. This is the one we're doing. Alright, so in this case, let me get rid of all this. Here we go. All right, this one we found our x-intercepts. Now look at the degree of the numerator and look at the degree of the denominator. So it's one, the degree of the numerator is less, right? So look at your test. What are you supposed to do when you have the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator? You can't do long division. So that's out. They're not the same, so it's not zero. So it's the what? The coefficient of these two. So what's our horizontal asymptote? A horizontal asymptote is equal to what? One half. So y is equal to one half. So um, Hubert. Yes. Um, I don't know if it's just me, but according to my notes, that would actually be the first one that it's equal to zero. Okay. I'm sorry. It's when they're equal. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I, I screwed up. I, I should quit. Are you on drugs? Or yeah, I'm on drugs. When equal. So, zero. Zero would be right here. Yeah, but it has the same degree. That's when you put it. Like that. Yeah. So, since this one, the numerator is less than the denominator, it's equal to zero. So, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's it's my fault. So I told my son, you know, when you run into life's bad things, you blame somebody else. You don't take responsibility. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, I can... The horizontal asymptote is zero. So I have no idea what this function looks like, but I do know that the horizontal asymptote is zero and the vertical asymptote is negative three and one half. Now, let's see what else they want you to do. They probably want you to graph it. And if they do, I would ask that you put it in your calculator and graph it. Okay? Let's see what they do now. Finding the asymptote, we've already done this. Okay, they went through and did it. They, did, they derived it, and we don't have to do that, okay? So you don't have to do that. So that's what it looks like right there on the bottom right hand. How would you get that? on your calculator. I would not ever ask you to graph this, okay? <laughs> the days of that are way over. If I ask you to graph it, it's going to be with the what? With the calculator. calculator. Right. Okay. All right, there's one. I want you to do everything you can with this one, include use your calculator to graph it. But first, before you use your calculator to graph it, I want you to find the vertical and horizontal asymptotes. Now they are equal. So, Miss Shuttleworth, please tell me if they're equal. You're going to use the coefficient of the top and the bottom. Yes. Leading coefficient, correct? Yes, sir. There we go. All right. So, I'm going to take my handy dandy. This is one, and this is one. So our horizontal asymptote is two over one, which is equal to two. So y is equal to 2. That's our horizontal asymptote. x minus 3 is equal to 0. 
Positive 3 is our what? Positive 3 is our vertical what? Asymptote. So it looks like we got a graph with a vertical asymptote of positive 3 and a horizontal asymptote of what? 2? Two. Two. And what does a function x look like? A half a volcano or a full volcano? Should be a half, half of a volcano, volcano. something like this. Y'all check me. Half a volcano, that's correct. Yep. And that's all there is to it. Now, what is the domain range? Well, the domain is negative infinity to what? To three, three. and then from three to what? Positive, Positive infinity. infinity. What's your range? Negative infinity to what? Two. two, and then two to what? Infinity. Positive infinity. You do not put brackets on these numbers because they do not touch the dashed lines. So therefore, all of them are parentheses. Don't forget to put the U between them because the homework and the test will have a connection if you don't put the U. All right, so make sure you put that. Let's see what our graph looks like. It's a miracle. Woohoo! All right, try that one. Oh, we got to use long division on this one. You might as well just what? Quit. Quit. Yeah. Dang old chocolate martini. <laughs> well, they drink these in New York, Miss Shuttleworth, while you wear hats and scarves like that. <laughs> you drink these when the, uh, that's what you need to do when you go to New York. Uh, believe it or not, after I work out, I do drink um, protein drinks sometimes. Good for you. Like that, with my little shaker cup. <laughs> does yours have a die in it? I mean, a, a, what is it, a jack in it? Or does it have a, a hamster wheel in it or whatever they call them thing? It's got the, the little They got some now with the little in jacks in them. You ever seen the little jacks? I haven't. I've got Nobody's talking. Huh? Sad face. Sad face. What? <laughs> yeah, I saw somebody that had one of these as a tall one, and it had a jack in it, a big jack, like, you know, jacks. Y'all ever seen jacks? Yeah. Mm -mm. You know, you bounce a ball and you catch the jacks. I never understood that game. Oh. Always in the tool store. Yeah, yeah. Jax is the, the old age Legos. Yeah. <laughs> you dig them, step on a Jack, you might have to go to the hospital. <laughs> step on a Lego, you'll just dance and run into something and fall. But you step <laughs> on a Jack, you might have to go to the hospital. Oh. Of course, old school, because back then, you know, kids knew how to. You know, they had sense. Now, you can't have metal jacks because kids will try to insert it in their eye or something. Or have a jack in the, jack, swallowing a jack challenge and <laughs> along with the pod and the rubber up the nose challenge. And, uh, I ain't never in my life. Rubber up the nose. Yeah, there's some, there's some kind of condom in the mouth or condom in the, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Makes a lot of sense. My son said, Daddy, what would you do if, if I if I tried the tide the, the tide what do you call it? Tide the tide pod, tide pod challenge. challenge. I said oh I'd take gosh. a gosh upside the head. I'd let you do it. Man was late in time. So long ago. I just don't understand the reasoning behind that. Gotta get the views. Pure raw. I think it's reason. nothing but a sign around their neck that says, "I don't have enough attention at home. I need attention." Same thing with blue hair and you know all the weird things students do. That's why I hate Halloween because you always got those handful of students that try to dress up and come to school and try to distract as many people as they can. All for attention. 
All right, so x minus 2 into x squared plus 0x plus 1. How many times will x go into x squared? x times, Hubert. X. x times x is x squared. x times negative 2 is what? Negative 2x. You always subtract. When you subtract, makes this a negative. That a positive, that always goes out. And you're left with 2x. Bring down the 1 to help out. How many times will x go into 2x? Two times. 2 times, 2x. Negative 2 times negative 2, or 2 times negative 2 is what? Negative 4. You always use a negative. That's going to make that negative and that plus. Do you care about the remainder? No, you really don't care about that. All you want is that. That is your, it's not a horizontal, it's not a vertical, it's an oblique asymptote. Oblique is a 25 cent word for diagonal. Okay? So this is what we call a diagonal, or hold your pinky up, oblique. I think that's Q-U-E, isn't it? Oblique. Yeah, yeah oblique. I don't understand something. Our president said there was a caravan coming up through Mexico, and the, and the media said that there wasn't a caravan, that that was his imagination. But Tijuana citizens are telling their government that they want the caravan out of their city. So if the caravan was an imagination, why is there a caravan in Tijuana and why is Tijuana complaining about it? Tijuana is in Mexico, right? It's not in the United States, is it? Okay. Just want to make sure because somebody's not telling the truth. You know who those uh, liberal... Uh, don't say that word. Don't say that word. You're racist. Uh, <laughs> All right. So here we go. X squared plus 1 over X minus 2. What's our vertical asymptote? Positive 2, right? Mm -hmm. Vertical asymptote is 2. Oblique asymptote is X plus 2. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my graph. We know our vertical asymptote is 2, 1, 2. And our horizontal asymptote is x plus 2. Remember your, how to draw a line? That's a vertical shift of 2. And it's a 45 degree angle. Mm -hmm. So there's our vertical and horizontal asymptotes. In case we don't have an horizontal, it's a oblique. So we know it's going to look like this, probably. Ooh. And how do you know that? After drawing them, you'll get... First of all, this is technically 1 over what? It's 1 over x, isn't it? Yeah. Because it has an x in the denominator, you don't even you don't even worry about this. But since this is an x, you still have the half a volcano effect. See? Just a different angle because of the oblique asymptote. So how did you know that the uh, the x plus two and the oblique asymptote equals diagonal? I mean, I know it's supposed to be diagonal, huh? but how? It just the plus two is one vertical. Effect. That's your vertical shift. This is this is pre-algebra. This is this is when you did this way back in pre-algebra. Y is equal to x plus two, and you plug in negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. And negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Negative 1 plus 2 is 3. Uh, no, 2. 0. No. 1. And 2. And 1 plus 2 is 3. 2 plus 2 is 4. And that's how you got this line right here. And the reason you knew it was oblique is because it has an x plus 2. Usually, if it's a horizontal, you're going to get what? A number. You're not going to have an x. So when you had that x, when you divide, usually when you divide, use long division, you're going to have an oblique asymptote. Unless it goes in it evenly, and then you'll just have another horizontal asymptote. Sorry about this crazy thing right here. Let me let's see if I can do it. Let's 
See, now it won't do it. I was doing it good the other day, and now... Here we go. Hey. <laughs> I haven't had training yet on these. We're thinking we might get training in a couple of years. <laughs> It's like a sunflower. Yeah, it does. Don't it ain't pretty. It looks like a sea urchin on SpongeBob. It yeah. does. That's what I was just thinking. That's how they make the sea urchins. <laughs> Dang old sea urchins. It's racist. Yeah, sea urchins are black, so you're not supposed to say yeah. sea urchins. And, and, and red, you can't use red either. SpongeBob's yellow. Yeah, you can't use yellow. Oh, did we even do that? Hold on, back up. Did we get that right? I don't think we even said it. They, they, they only... They didn't do the oblique asymptote? Oh, they're doing it the long way. No, it's probably the way they show us... The There's, there it is. There's the oblique asymptote, X plus 2. What I get? We got it. It's a miracle. So you said you don't do anything with the remainder? No. Okay. I mean, if you want to write it, if it asks for it, then you write it like this right here. X plus 2 plus 5 over X minus 2. Just like I showed y'all. But And you can put a comma here if you want to. Some people put a comma here. That's fine if you do that. Or put this in parentheses because that's the X plus 2. And then this is the remainder. However, you want to so do it. Have, so you have to do it on the homework. Do you? You have to put the plus. Okay. And there's what it looks like. Again, I really don't care if you take the calculator and verify what it looks like. I just want you to be able to show the vertical and horizontal without the calculator. I want you to be able to do that without the calculator. Got it. And okay. there's did where. You, did you open up the homework for the five point whatever I don't know if stuff? I have or not. I'll okay. probably open it up today. Okay. And here's the checklist. And I've already choked, told you the checklist. Show all X and Y intercepts. Well, when you show the X intercepts, you're basically showing the vertical what? The vertical asymptotes. Y intercept, that's in the original equation when you start plugging zero for X. Okay. Uh, horizontal oblate, any asymptotes. That's going to affect the domain and range. And. Uh, number four, you can actually just do that in the calculator. Make sure that you show the graph. Okay, I don't know what uh, we've already... Okay, that's just reiterating what we're doing. Okay, I'm not going to go... Just make sure you can do the two or three that I've done. Okay, here's one. Okay, somebody tell me what the vertical asymptotes are. I mean, the horizontal. Zero. Why? Because the numerator has a lesser degree than the denominator. Oh, she actually listens. It's a miracle. She's the one that does it. Okay. All right, so horizontal asymptote is zero. Now, find the vertical asymptotes. You're going to have to set the denominator equal to zero. Which, did we already do this one? Yes, sir. How did we already do this one? Behind the... Oh, yeah, we did. That's weird. I, I'm just that Yeah, but we did it way before. I don't know. Maybe they wanted to continue it after they gave the... I don't know. So we've already done it. Okay. Did we get those answers? I guess we did. The y-intercept, you plug in 0 for x, and I've been showing you all that for the last three units. So I'm sorry. If you don't know how to find the y-intercept by now, then, you know... Back in method two of graphing, if you want the x-intercept, you plug in zero for y. If you want the y-intercept, you plug in zero for what? I mean, we've been doing that since 102. How many of y'all had 102? I mean, that's a long time ago. Algebra two. The x-intercepts set the denominator equal to what? Zero. Or y is equal to zero and solve. Okay, this is just a reiteration of what we've been doing. You don't have to write all that down.
I don't want you to have to do that. You just do that on the calculator. All right, what's this one? Have we done this one? Got the horizontal yeah. I think what they're doing, I think they're starting with these and then they're interjecting the rules and then they're wanting you to finish it. We've already done them. Okay? So your what's your horizontal asymptote? Three. Oh whoa. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry. Drugs. She's on drugs, y'all. <laughs> Dad gum. It's sorry, Dad gum. That gum watch is falling apart. Dang old son tore it up. When I get home, I'm gonna whoop it. Actually, he's not with me this week. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna be on time for class this week because everything's his fault. All right. Oh my God. So the horizontal asymptote is what? They're both equal. Two. But two. The horizontal asymptote is two. The vertical asymptote is what? Three. 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 And it's going to be an X function, so it's a half a volcano. And we've already done this. So I guess they're just putting it all together. Yep, we already did that. And if you want to, can you find everything with your calculator? Pretty much. You can find the X intercepts and the Y intercepts. We've already done that one. Okay, that's probably going to be it when they get to this. Have we done that one? Yeah, we did that one. I don't think we've done this one, have we? So. All right. Do this one from top to bottom. Oh, we got I'll let y'all do everything. If you can't do it, then that pretty much means that you suck at this, this section. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'll give you all a hint. The degrees are equal, so therefore the horizontal asymptote is what? Daggum three. Good job. Dang old, not daggum, it's dang old. Oh, yeah. Dang old. Dang old boom iron. Dang old federal marshal. Miss White, you sure are quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I just haven't had a lot to say, I guess. Yeah, this show to work kind just, of hogs all the attention. Well, I'm just That's ready to go. I'm hat. hungry. She's wanting attention. That's why she's wearing a hat. <laughs> she's the one that dresses the politics. Yeah, that's the one. She 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 comes to school dressed as you know buckwheat because <laughs> she wants attention. Oh my gosh. Y'all know the type I'm talking about, right? Yeah. I used to be that type. Mm -hmm. I used to be that I type. Did. I never did because I hated Halloween. You did. I had an older brother named Michael. And it was a rough experience. <laughs> this is supposed to be a joke. <laughs> I'll take you away, Colin. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, you said no, I'm sorry, Colin. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, so you know the horizontal. I'm going to go ahead and do the horizontal because it's 3 over what? 3 one. over 1. So horizontal asymptote is equal to 3 over 1, which is equal to 3. And that's y is equal to 3. Oh. Okay, that was nice. <laughs> All right, now set the denominator equal to what? Zero. X squared plus 8X plus blank is equal to negative 16 plus 1. Well, that's not the x-intercept, really, because you're supposed to plug in 0. Let's do that. Let's see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do that in my head. Negative 3 eighths. x-intercept is equal to 3 eighths. Negative 3 eighths. Somebody check my math. Let's see, y-intercept, hmm, y-intercept, if I plug in zero, I gotta multiply both sides, so I gotta set this one equal, to get the x-intercept, I gotta set this one, or, what's the y-intercept, I'm sorry, y-intercept is equal to 3 eighths. 
that if I, if I set this equal, that equal to zero, then I gotta multiply both sides by this. So that's gonna give me this is equal to zero. So this will give me my x-intercepts. Okay, so we'll do that in just a second. Now we're setting this equal to zero to find our what? Our vertical what? Asymptote. So half of eight, hmm, it's what? Four, four squared. Like Sixteen. X plus what? Four quantity squared is equal to zero. X plus four square root is zero. Somebody put that in the calculator. X yeah. is equal to negative what? Four. four. So our vertical asymptote is y x is equal to what? Negative four. So let's find our x intercepts. Three x squared minus three x minus six is equal to zero. 3x squared minus 3x plus blank is equal to 6 plus blank. 3 times x minus x, x squared minus 1x, yeah, yeah, positive, plus blank is equal to 6 plus 3 times blank. Half of 1 is 1 half. 1 half squared is what? 1 fourth. 3 times x minus one half quantity squared is equal to six plus three fourths will be twenty four fourths plus three fourths twenty seven fourths somebody check my man how many fourths is six six times four is what 24 fours plus 3 fours is 27 fours. Thank you for checking me. <sighs> Square root, uh, let's see, divide by 3, which means multiplied, so that's going to be 27 twelfths. So x minus 1 half quantity squared. It's doing actual trick. Yeah. Well, at least I know why it's doing it now, because my left arm in the way. X minus one half quantity squared, and I lost my train of thought, is equal to 27 twelfths. X minus one half is equal to the square root of 27 over the square root of 12. So I'm just going to bring that up, and that's going to be a mess minus one half is equal to the square root of 27, square root of 12 over 12, and I'm going to change this to 24 over 12. I'm ready to quit, y'all. Good. 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 Yeah, that's good. All right, so that's going to be Somebody 27, that's 9. I think we got a good bit in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase all this. We won't bring this up here because so x is equal to Square root of 3 times 9, right? And the square root of 4 times the square root of 3, y'all check my math there, over uh, 12, and then plus 24 over 12. So that's going to be x is equal to 3 times the square root of 3 times 2 square root of 3 over 12 plus 24 over 12. I don't know why this is coming out. We should have been able to. I guess I just wanted to make it difficult. 3 times 2 is what? 6. 6 and 3 times 3 is what? That would be 3. 
over 12 plus 24 over 12. 6 times 3 is 18. 18 plus 24 is what? Say what? 32. Is it 32? Or 42? 42 over 12. And that's equal to... Something tells me this ain't right. Uh, what is 42? 42 is the 21... 21 over 6. 3 is 7 over 2. Y'all check me. Yeah. Now, somebody... Hold on. What? That x equals... Or x minus squared equals 27 over 12. Couldn't you just simplify that from the beginning? Yeah, we should have. We should have simplified it. And that would have been, well, the square root of 27 is the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. See, it would have canceled out. Okay, it would have been square root of 9 is 3. Yeah, I think we got I think we got the right answer. We just carried it out. Well, I just didn't catch it. All right, look, let's see what we got. We got a horizontal asymptote of what? 3? 1, 2, 3. We got a vertical asymptote of what? Negative four. Okay, we got a y-intercept. I'm gonna do it in red. We got a y-intercept of negative three eighths. Negative three eighths is right there. And we got an x-intercept of seven halves, which is three and a half. Somewhere in there. So I have no idea what this looks like. It's looking something, I think, like that maybe. I don't know. And then this one will be up here. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Somebody graph that on your calculator. Let's see if the next slide has it. What? Okay, I figured somebody would tell me. What time is it? It's 11 Okay. Let's see what it looks like, though. I mean, nobody's going to explode, I hope, except the people outside. I want to see what it looks like. Okay, I was off. It's, Jesus. But no, I think I, I think I got everything right, but I just was off with the sketch. All right, y'all get out of here. Have a good day, and we'll finish this. We'll finish 5.2. Is this 5.2? Have you opened up the homework? Not yet. I'm going to. I'll open it up after, after I cover it. I've covered it, so I'll open it up sometime today. Y'all have a good day. Bye. Bye.